This is Intel's i5-11500, which, like the name implies, sits nicely between the slightly lesser brother, the 11400, and the slightly fancier 11600K. All of those chips I just mentioned are 6-core, 12-thread uh, CPUs, although the locked i5s, the 11400 and 11500, share the same 65-watt TDP. In fact, the only differences between the 11400 and 11500 are slight clock speed changes and improved or higher-end integrated graphics. Specifically, the 11500 is using the UHD 750 graphics rather than 730 you get in the 11400, and the base and boost clocks are slightly higher on the 11500, but not by much. But does that difference justify the extra 10 or so pounds it costs to pick up the slightly higher end one? Well, let's test them all out, including some Ryzen chips for good measure, and see how it stacks up. I want to start off with a quick rundown of the full spec of this chip so we know what we're getting ourselves in for. Like I said, this is a 6-core, 12-thread chip. It has a base clock of 2.7 GHz, which is uh, up from 2.6 on the 11400. It also has a maximum boost, which is actually a single-core boost, of up to 4.6 GHz, which is up from 4.2 on the 11400. Interestingly, though, that the key figure that hasn't been mentioned and you won't see as often is the all-core boost, which is only 4.2 GHz, aka exactly the same as the 11400. It does come with those improved integrated graphics, the UHD 750 instead of the UHD 730, although otherwise is pretty much identical, sporting the same 3200 MHz maximum supported memory frequency, which I should make clear isn't the maximum you can physically use with this. You can use anything as high as you like up to about 5000 megahertz, but anything higher than 3200 is considered out of spec by Intel and therefore could void your CPU's warranty. So, based on the spec sheet anyway, the 11500 should offer slightly stronger performance in single-threaded workloads and be pretty much the same in the multi-threaded ones compared to the 11400. Well, I've got an 11400, specifically the 11400F, as well as an 11600K, and a Ryzen 5600X and 3600, so let's start benchmarking. Starting with the CPU-specific workloads and Citibench, somewhat unsurprisingly, the spec sheet doesn't lie. The 11500 scored 550 points, which is 26 points higher than the 11400F, but 43 points shy of the 11600K. Much like the rest of the 11th gen chips, it does hold a convincing lead over the last gen 11, uh, 10400F and even the Ryzen 3600, but can't keep up with AMD's newer 5600X. In multi-threaded, again, the spec sheet rings true. The 11500 scores within 50 points of the 11400F, making it a whisker faster, but really not by much. It's still nearly a thousand points faster than the 10400F and holds 400 over the 3600, with only the faster 11600K and Ryzen 5600X leading by 300 and 400 points respectively. Blender is the same story. The BMW scene had the two locked i5s running within just a second of each other. The 11600K runs around 20 seconds faster, whereas the 5600X is only about 3 seconds ahead. The 3600 runs 20 seconds slower, and the 11400F trails over 45 seconds slower. In Gooseberry, the 3600's ability to be more consistent in holding its boost means that it actually squeezes out a slight advantage over the 11400F, but only by 11 seconds over a 20 minute render, but it does express the difference in boosting techniques quite nicely. The 11500F did manage a better show, running a touch over a minute faster than the 11400F, although still nearly two minutes shy of the 11600K, which itself is already 30 seconds slower than the Ryzen 5600X. So in CPU-specific tasks, specifically ones that are single-threaded, you can pretty much take whatever result the 11400F got and add 4.5%, and you'll pretty much come out with what the 11500 would give you. If it's a multi-threaded task, then you can assume that it is going to be slightly faster, but really not by all that much. The thing is, those were CPU-specific tasks, but for gaming, 
Well, gaming is often a lot less CPU heavy or CPU limited, and so having a faster CPU doesn't always linearly affect your performance. So let's test some games and see how this does. In Watch Dogs Legion, it's pretty much identical to the 11400F. It technically ran with a lower 1% score, but I wouldn't read too heavily into that. Otherwise, the 3600 lags behind along with the 10400F, and both the 11600K and 5600X hold a slight advantage, but not by much. Cyberpunk is similar. The 11500F sits nicely in the middle of the pack at 87 FPS average, with the 11400F only 1 FPS behind. All of the 11th gen chips are a hair faster than either Ryzen, although the 3600 does struggle more, hitting just 72 FPS average, compared to the best result, which was from the 11600K of 91 FPS. CSGO is generally a game that shows great linearity in CPU performance, and this is no different. The faster the CPU you have, the more performance you get, and that's quite clear here. The 5600X comes out on top with a relatively healthy margin. The 11500 sits nicely between the 11400F and the 11600K, although I should add that there is a fair bit of variability in the re these results, so while I wouldn't argue the positions, the uh, specific figures you're seeing I wouldn't take as absolutes. Fortnite also works out pretty well, with the 11500 again offering a nice split in performance between the two other 11th gen chips, and doing a better job than the older 3600 and 10400F. The spread in performance isn't all that massive, it's only about 25 FPS from the slowest to the fastest, and all with remarkably consistent 1% low figures too. And finally, in Microsoft Flight, the trend is continued with the 11500 hitting 38 FPS average, 2 FPS shy of the 11600K, but 2 FPS faster than the 11400F. It's also ahead of both the 10400F and the 3600, although the 5600X trounces them all with 44 FPS average and a stronger 25 FPS in the 1% lows. So yes, the 11500 is ever so slightly faster than the 11400 in games, although it doesn't quite match up to the 11600K. The performance spread between these three really isn't all that big, and that can also be explained by the power consumption. The 11500 I saw peak at 150 watts, admittedly with uh, the power limits unlocked, which the B560 motherboard I was using for this testing did by default, and doesn't void your CPU's warranty, that's considered in spec, uh, but those figures are consistent with what I saw from both the 11600K and from the 11400F as well. Actually, when it was doing an all-core workload, once it dropped down off of boost, since the all-core boost is the same, it was pretty much identical in its power consumption between those two, which, again, makes a lot of sense. But when you compare that to the power that the Ryzen chips draw, just 88 watts of total socket power, which is uh, the default limit for these chips, even if you were to enable Precision Boost Overdrive, which actually gives you even more performance, that would only peak you up to about 100, 105 watts with this 5600X, so to have this 11500, which generally speaking is less performance, draw anywhere between almost double or 50% more power, is kind of crazy. It also means that you will need to buy a better cooler for pretty much any of these chips than you would either of the Ryzen ones. So should you be buying the 11500 over the 11400? Well, if integrated graphics are something that is important to you as a, a buying decision, then it, it's pretty much a no-brainer. While I haven't specifically touched on them here, it's quite obvious just from looking at the spec sheets that the 11500's UHD 750 offers 32 execution units versus the 24 you get on the 11400 with the UHD 730. No matter how you look at it, that is going to be a reasonable performance improvement, so if that is important to you, then yeah, it's worth the extra money. But if you are planning on getting the F version of the 11400, the one without the integrated graphics, and saving yourself some money, well that's a lot more of a, a tough decision. That is a price difference of around £30 at the moment, and that's pretty substantial. 
I would actually argue that that £30 could be spent better on, say, a, a better CPU cooler, because, let's face it, a better cooled 11400F is going to perform better than an undercooled 11500 that can't stay up on boost. But should you be considering Ryzen instead of any of these 11th gen chips? Well, that's where it gets interesting. Now, I would argue that unless you're trying to find a used 3600 for a really good price, I would call that one out of the running for now. But the 5600X has recently had a price drop down to more like 250, 260 pounds, and that changes the dynamic a little bit. Because, like I said, you will need a better CPU cooler to get the most out of any of these chips. So you're going to be spending more on your cooler. And on top of that, even if you go with one of the more budget friendly B560 boards, you can buy a like for like B550 board for 20 or 30 pounds less. Both of those factors help offset the cost of the slightly higher CPU. Of course, if integrated graphics are important to you, then AMD is pretty much off the table until they launch the 5600G that's slated for early August. But if they're not, the 5600X really rivals the 11600K instead, and if you can get a 5600X build for the same money as the 11.4 or 11.500, well, that starts to sound like a much better value proposition, plus the lower heat output might be better if you're in hotter climates, or just as, uh, as we all warm, again, that might be a good idea. Now with that said, those are my thoughts and you've seen the results, but I would love to know your thoughts in those comments down below. Which of these chips, if any, would you pick up yourself? Would you prefer going with Ryzen for its lower power consumption and potentially better performance for the final system value? Or would the better CPU value be a better choice going with the 11400 or 11500 instead? And out of the 11.4 and 11.5, which is your preference? And if you want to check out any of the CPUs that I've been testing, at least the ones that are currently on sale, I'm going to leave links to them in the description down below. Those are Amazon affiliate links that will take you to your local Amazon store. We can see pricing when and when you watch this because it can and does vary. There are also a whole load of ways both to stay up to date with the channel and these videos like hitting that subscribe button and the bell notification icon and great ways to support the channel too if you want to keep me making these videos. There is the new YouTube join button that you can press to get access to our Money Men Discord chat, sponsor free videos, and some extra cool rewards like emojis for the comments and our live streams, or you can support on Patreon instead if you prefer there. You can also pick up merch or hoodies or t-shirts like this one, this is the RTX 2060 I designed in Blender myself for some other cool designs, and there's plenty of other links in the description you can check out, from uh, uh, Overclock K affiliate links if you're buying from there, there's VPN options, Humble Bundle, Streamlabs OBS, and a whole load of other stuff, so feel free to check it out. You can also check out more videos on the end cards like the 11400 and 11600K videos, and that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below as well. And otherwise, we'll see you in the next one.